Hello fellow sim magicians and welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesday. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about the pedal response curve. Now, if you have ever played around with your software, chances are you have seen something called a pedal response curve. But have you ever wondered what it actually does? Well, today we're going to go through four of the most common types of pedal response curves on their characteristics, how they affect your inputs, and how you can implement them into your software settings. So the four different curves in questions are linear, convex, concave, and S-curve. And we'll start off with linear. Linear is the most commonly seen pedal response curve and is the default setting of all the pedals that you can find on the market. There are no particular specialties on the linear response curve, but it is especially helpful for learning the car as it is very direct and it helps you understand the car better. And it's also helpful for the drivers who prefers a more direct feel on the car. The characteristics of a convex response curve is that it has a high mid-end input. That means the mid-end input from your feet will be registered higher into the game. This is very suitable for trail braking as you need to maintain a brake pressure into the corner and it allows you to maintain more pressure and therefore gives more balance to the front axle allowing you to turn the car more effectively. It is also very helpful on low power cars as well where you need to maintain a higher power input in order to keep the revs on the car to give it more power. The concave response curve is the exact opposite to the convex response curve. Instead of having a higher mid-end input, it has a lower mid-end input and that means the mid-end input register from the pedal will be lower into the game. And what it means is that it allows more defined control on the pedals. This setting is especially suitable for cars with a lot of power and torque, or cars that has a very slippery rear end, where it needs more defined control in order to get the most out of the car. And last but not least is the S-curve. The S-curve has a decreased low end and an increased high end, thus creating a S-looking curve on the graph, hence the name. And this setting is the best of both worlds. It's sort of a hybrid between concave and convex response curve, where it gives increased control for low end, but also increases input for high end. This is especially helpful in competitive racing, where it gives you the increased input without losing the low end control. It allows more brake input for trail braking into low speed corners, but it also allows finer controls in high speed corner trail brakings. And the same can be said about throttle as well. It gives more input for the high speed corners where you need to maintain power, but it also gives you the low end control you need when getting out of a traction zone. So now you have an understanding on the pedal response curves. Next time, before you hop into your favorite sim, Try and play around with your pedal software and find what suits you. In racing where milliseconds matter, having that little extra bit of advantage in your pocket might be what you need. So that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to follow us on various social media platforms if you haven't already. I'm Alvin, this is Tech Tuesday and I hope to see you in the next episode. But until then, keep racing, sim magicians.